guys. All right, Pac-12 after dark takes us to Corvallis, where things might get wild. Number seven, USC, visiting Oregon State in another battle of unbeatens. Heisman candidate Caleb, Caleb Williams and the Trojans are six-point favorites. Total 70 and a hook. Beavers are 8-0 ATS since the start of last season. Chip, what's your approach in this game? Not to get caught up in trying to wish this thing into existence, not to just get <laughs> swept up in beaver fever and trying to, you know, love all, all that could be going down in Corvallis. I, I think that Lincoln Riley, the villain of college football, has really built up a group of haters over the course of the last, you know, eight months or so that are looking to see USC fall, and they're too daggum good. They are not going to lose in this spot. They are not going to be limited in their scoring. Now, USC's defense, it is uh, you know, worth noting that on paper and at moments during the performance, especially against Fresno State before Jay Kaner went out with an injury, yeah, maybe you might be able to get them. And Jonathan Smith has done a good job with this Oregon State program in being able to field a good offense, especially when it comes to running the ball behind a good offensive line. But man, we're talking about Caleb Williams, Jordan Addison, Travis Dye. This group is phenomenal, man. And you get this under a touchdown. Stop trying to wish an upset into existence just because you're mad at Lincoln Riley. Trojans roll in this one. I agree. It's a Brinks truck game. Just back up that Brinks truck and start throwing <laughs> cash at the Trojans minus six. I mean, look, you're telling me a Trojans ticket cashes with a touchdown win. I am in pretty much every day of the week, but especially against an Oregon State team that, yeah, they're, they're, they're solid, undefeated, got a good offense. I get all of that. They're not going to be able to keep pace with USC in this game. Lincoln Riley knows how to develop an offense that can take advantage of some weaknesses. And there are some holes, especially in the secondary times for Oregon State, that I think he can exploit. You're just This is a basketball on grass type game. The over under 70, I think that tells you all you need to know about what people are going to expect in this game. But in a situation like that, you take the team with the athletes. And USC has way better athletes than Oregon State. If it's a 10-point game, that's fine. If it gets crazy and it gets all Pac-12 after dark on steroids, that's fine. USC will still roll. All right, hold on one second. I just want to see. I want to see if this is going to work. Give me a second. Don't get mad at me, uh, Taylor. I'm going to. I'm going to move the audio over here. Let's see if we can get this to play. Yay! Yes, there it is. <laughs> the kids are cheering. A lock. A lock agreement. There it is. Chip and Barrett. Well done. Great stuff here on a Friday on CBS Sports HQ. Let's recap their picks. Wow, that could have went a lot worse than I thought it was going to be. That was, uh, that was risky right there. Taking the mic off, playing it off my laptop. Woo! Could have had some egregious sound there coming out of who knows where. All right, here's a look back at their picks. Uh, under in Tennessee, the play. Arkansas, uh, they both agree. Uh, Jimbo Fisher, 0-4 ATS against Arkansas's Texas a head coach. They like that morsel. Vanderbilt and the over. Uh, Barrett's back in the fight in Barton Simmons. They're in disagreement on Clemson and Wake Forest and disagreement on Ohio State and Wisconsin, but they both agree on the Trojan fight on to cover the six on the road in Corvallis. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.